afternoon. My name is Danella Clark, and I'm the president of Boston Arts Academy Foundation. I can't think of a better way to have kicked off this afternoon's celebration by hearing from, again, our award-winning Spirituals Ensemble, who's actually celebrating their 10th anniversary this year. And like Jeff Rosica, they actually have a Grammy Award as well, or we have a Grammy. So thank you for being here. I want to start by... Um, welcoming our mayor and I want to say thank you so much to you Mr. Mayor because five years ago when you took office we had a deal on the table Ann tells me and you came in and you said this is not a good deal for Boston Arts Academy and you said trust me and she trusted you we trusted you and because of your leadership we now have a school building that our students deserve so thank you for keeping your promise and your word thank you for being here and this could not have happened without the incredible leadership of our state treasurer, Deb Goldberg. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for your leadership as well. I want to certainly recognize our elected officials that are here with us, our own uh, city councilor that represents the address that we're at. Uh, city councilor Josh Zakem is here. Thank you, Josh. Um, city councilor Mike Flaherty, city councilor at large, Anissa Asabi George, Kim Janey. I'm not sure if I miss any other elected official that's here with us um, this afternoon. I want to recognize our amazing board of trustees under the capable leadership of Dr. David Nelson, who's right there. David is the president of uh, Mass College of Art. And then our um, chair of our foundation board, Dr. Lee Pelton, who you'll hear from later. Lee was actually the chair of our board of trustees when this building was approved on December 13, 2017. So while you're hearing from Lee today, the mayor tells Ann and I that we have 10 other events. So you'll hear different voices as we go along. But I want to pause and ask all of the members of Boston Arts Academy boards to please stand and just give us a wave. Thank you so much for your leadership, your dedication, your commitment, and your support. And I also want to recognize our founders. I often say to Ann that I stand on the shoulders of many. And we have a lot of founders here today, starting with Kay Sloan, who was our founding chair of our Board of Trustees. You could hold the applause, we have a few. Um, Sandy Gordon, who is our founding board chair and the matriarch of Boston Arts Academy. Dr. Linda Nathan, who is our founding headmaster. We have so many founders here. Ann Clark, who is our found, a founding teacher, and now our headmaster. Kathleen March is somewhere here, founding faculty. We have Buddy Paul, our founding um, head of custodian. So all the founders, if you're a founding parent or founder, just wave. Thank you so much. We could not have done this without you. And I certainly want to recognize all Boston Arts Academy faculty and staff and students and families and community. We salute and celebrate you too. This is certainly your victory, so thank you so much. I also want to recognize Lee Michael Kennedy, who's somewhere in the audience. He's going to be the builder of this project. Lee, thank you so much. We have representatives here from Perkins Eastman, and also Scott Wilson from Wilson Butler. I want to really shout out Scott. I was talking to Rick Tagliferi yesterday and Ann Clark earlier, who told me that Scott Wilson and Wilson Butler had been with us, Mr. Mayor every time we try to get a new school building. So we really want to celebrate and thank Wilson um, Butler. I also want to recognize, you know, part of what we're doing now is building our future and going forward. And we are so grateful for the first time in our history, we have an honorary chair of our big event that's coming up on May 4, 2019. And I want to recognize Jeff Rosica for saying he's going to chair, but also to congratulate him because AVID is re receiving a Lifetime Emmy Achievement Award next week in Los Angeles. So Jeff, thank you and thank you for being here. We really appreciate you. Now, before I um, turn the program over and introduce the mayor, we have, now I wouldn't be the president of the foundation, so um, all the elected officials forgive me, but I have to do my job. Lee will tell you I have to do my job. So 
For those of you who are interested in purchasing a piece of history, this commemorative brick, I want to shout out Brian McLaughlin, who has been absolutely amazing, Mr. Mayor. I said, I, for all the events, I want to work with Brian. He's just been absolutely the best person in the city um, to work with. But Lee Kennedy is giving us 174 commemorative yellow bricks of this building. 174, get it? 174 Ipswich Street. So my partner in this work, Ann Clark, she has already purchased brick number one. All the bricks are numbered. And I, because I'm all about the end game, I have purchased brick number 174. So if you're interested in gifting us $500, we will uh, give you a commemorative brick. So thank you so much for that. I also must thank the amazing Boston Arts Academy Foundation staff. Somehow we got thrown into put together groundbreaking. I do nothing of myself, so I certainly want to thank and recognize them. And then Carol McFall from um, the Castle Group for helping us with PR. Now it is my distinct pleasure and honor to introduce the 54th mayor of the city of Boston. I am a proud resident of the city of Boston. Um, I hail from the neighborhood of our most beloved mayor, um, Mayor Menino, who helped us get started in this building. But Mayor Walsh has been a hugely important champion, not only for Boston Arts Academy, but for ensuring excellent public ed education for all children. This is underscored by his commitment to updating and modernizing not just our school facility, he recently completed the Dearborn, and I know he has plans to do much more. Born in Dorchester, where he still calls home today, and raised by immigrant parents, he understands firsthand that a good education opens opportunities and is a critical foundation for every child's future. Please join me in welcoming to the podium my mayor, our mayor, Marty Walsh. Thank you, Danella. And I want to, um, how about a nice round of applause for Danella, who's done an incredible job at this school and so much. Um, those of you that are sitting there, it's, it's beautiful. If you sit in this side, it's freezing cold. <laughs> the treasurer, myself, and all of us are shivering, so I apologize. Uh, but I, I want to thank Treasurer Goldberg and her team at the Mass School Building Authority. Um, honestly, they're, they're such big partners here. I'm going to talk about them more in a minute. Uh, I'm not going to go into every person that's here, but I, I do want to thank Ann Clark, the headmaster. I want to thank the board of both the foundation and, and the school. Uh, I want to thank the BAA Spiritual Ensemble. I want to thank the kids. This is why we're here for you guys. I want to congratulate all of you. Um, I want to thank Lee Pelton um, and uh, Robbie Consalvo, who's representing the district today, the chief of staff of the school department. Thank you, uh, Councilor, for being here. And all the city councilors that are here, uh, Michael and Kim and, and Josh and Anissa, uh, because it, you know we, we've been able to do this through, through the budget process and, and moving forward. Um, this is a proud day for the BAA community uh, and for the Fenway neighborhood and the entire city of Boston. Uh, this $125 million building truly is a transformative project for not just for for Boston Arts Academy, but for the entire school district in the city. And, and real quick, when Danella talked about one of my first meetings, when I became the mayor, um, we were looking at this, this project was gonna be merged with the, with, the, uh, with the Josiah Quincy. It was gonna be built over the highway. It was gonna be complicated. It was gonna be expensive. And when I became the mayor, we looked at the project and, and, and Mike O'Neill, the chairman of the school committee at the time, I looked and I said, I, I don't know how we can do this. If we haven't built over a highway since the Prudential in 1960, uh, the cost of this is going to run out of control. It's going to be, it's just not the right location. I didn't think it was the right location. Uh, and, and I just thought the cost was going to run. Uh, and, and I brought the parents in. And Joyce Linehan was in the meeting with me. And honest to God, I had, a I had the meeting with the parents from, from BAA. And I, I, I braced for probably what would be a, a normal uh, meeting with, with people when, I when I'm telling them they were going to lose something and get something back later on down the road. So I went into the meeting. and. I'm like, okay, it's going to be a hard meeting. We walked in, we sat down, and we kind of explained what we're going to do. And, and the parents looked at us and said, that's okay. <laughs> as long as you promise that you're going to build us a school. I said, I, yeah, I do. And, and I want to commend the parents. I want to commend the parents. Thank you. Thank you for having faith in all of us. Um, 
as I promised, this would be uh, this in the Josiah Quincy would be two schools that we're going to build, and we're going to build the other one too. Uh, we're still working on that project to, to figure figure that out. And Deb Goldberg's in, so her team just looked at me. She's in, she's in for a lot of money. So thank you very much, Mass School Valley Authority. I appreciate it. We're, we're, this council enjoys that. Uh, but but what happens today is is this takes this school to a, this vibrant school to a whole new level. Um, it, it, the, the strong academics, training, programming, the, the great things going on. All you got to do is talk to the kids. All you got to do is talk to the students here and talk to them about, about what the school means to them uh, and, and their experience in the school before this and now their experience in this school, the opportunity they have. Uh, we're going to be adding a recording and dance studios here in the school, theaters, new performance spaces, a science lab. More, um, we're also planting more trees and widening the sidewalk, so you're going to have a lot more green space here. Um, we're also going to work working with something the entire neighborhood wants to see happen here is really turn this into a, a neighborhood feel right here in this in this part of this in this part of the Fenway area. So we're excited about that, um, and we're just scratching the surface. This is a 21st century model for education that's going going on in this school. I'm grateful to all the people, the partnership with the Mass School of the Building Authority. Uh, I want to thank the Mass School Building Authority for making this possible, uh, this renovation possible, and supporting other products all over the city of Boston. Prior, prior to 2014, we really didn't use the School Building Authority the way we should have, and we started to enter a relationship. And then Deb, Deb Goldberg got elected treasurer, and that relationship went to a whole new level uh, of investments made into our city from the School Building Authority. Her team has been absolutely remarkable and incredible. And I want to thank her team, and I want to thank her team that I stole that works for the city now. So thank you, Brian McLaughlin <laughs> and other folks. Um, this city, uh, you know, I was, I was interviewed before we started here today, and they asked me a question about the arts and how important it is in our city, and it's such an important part of our city. Because our city grows as, as the hub of innovation for arts, and our classrooms must keep up with that. And, and we have to make sure that our kids are learning in, in an environment, in, in, a, in an atmosphere that truly is what, what they're learning in this. What they learned in this building is remarkable. What they're going to be able to experience in the new building is going to be even more, even more so. And that's exactly what we're doing with a billion dollar school facility investment in our master plan called Build BPS, is making sure that we're having more groundbreakings and more opportunities for our young people to learn in an environment, a good environment, a clean environment, a safe environment, with all of the things that they deserve and they need. This work is picking up, up momentum. We're going to be discussing in the next couple of days and weeks all of the next investments we're going to be making in our city and what we're planning on doing in the city and our school department. Uh, it's not easy work. Sometimes it's controversial work. Sometimes it's tough work. But you have to do it. We have to do it. Our kids deserve the best. Our kids deserve the best opportunities they have. So as we continue to move forward here, we're going to be working collaboratively to make this happen. These are the investments that we're making here today, are lifting our students up. They offer the kinds of opportunities that are life-changing for our young people. They show great case incredible talent that we have right here in our neighborhood. And it's the spirit of creativity that we have in the heartbeat of our city here in Boston. Um, you can see in schools like this one, BAA unlocks potential. It shows how we can strengthen and enrich in everything we do in the city of Boston. It trains the next generation of artists and leaders. Uh, I'm very proud of that we're embarking on this next chapter. I want to thank everyone who made this possible. I want to thank the Public Facilities Department, especially Trish Lyons and Jim McQueen. I want to thank the Boston Public Schools, the Mass School Building Authority, the Boston City Council, President Andrea Campbell's with us as well. Thank you, Council Campbell. Uh, without, without a partnership here, uh, this has been in the capital budget now in, in, the, in, the, in the city for the last three years, moving it forward, moving it forward, moving forward until we get to a groundbreaking here. I want to congratulate the entire BAA community. I want to thank and congratulate the past graduates of the school, the parents who are engaged in the school, the people who founded the school, the people who, who wrote checks to the school, the people who have anything to do with the school. Thank you for what you do. And again, most importantly, to the young people, congratulations. This is going to be your building, and I hope you enjoy it. I, I'm excited to work with everyone on this project, and I can't wait to see that when we're here for the, for the opening and the ribbon cutting of this incredible school. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Walsh. With expertise in the private and public sectors, Massachusetts State Treasurer Deb Goldberg has been a longtime advocate for breaking down barriers for families all across the Commonwealth. We are very fortunate to also have the state support for our new building. She has played a vital role in securing funds from the state for the new Boston Arts Academy building. Her family has been supportive 
of Boston Arts Academy as well as she has. I could tell you last week, just a few days ago, she had so many, so many things on her schedule today and she cleared her schedule to be here because she understood how important this was to the BAA community. I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for your leadership, your support, and for joining us today. Thank you. Very much. So it'll be a little bit of a surprise as to why today was so incredibly important beyond all the reasons that I'm typically so, so passionate about our schools because this is about you guys. It's not about us right here. It's about you guys over there because your lives are ahead of you and it is our obligation to make sure that we give you every opportunity you deserve. And that's what my personal mission is and that's my heritage. And so I wanna bring something up that I don't bring up in any of these groundbreakings. My dad is celebrating today. Linda Nathan, don't cry. In the late 1980s, my dad wanted to make a difference in the schools in the city of Boston. He was a proud graduate of Boston Latin School, and he knew he wouldn't be where he was at that point had it not been for those opportunities. His dad was a public servant. They couldn't afford to send him to a private school, and Boston Latin School got him going. So he helped found the Center for Collaborative Education, which focused on a pilot school type of model. Look what's behind us right now, and imagine how he is going to feel, please God, he's with us, when we're here for that ribbon cutting, and I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure he is here for that ribbon cutting, Linda Nathan will tell you that he mentored her. And so today is a family occasion for me, and it is a wonderful occasion to be here with all of you, those behind me, those in front of me. Marty and I sat in his office before I was elected, and I looked at him and I said, Marty, I got to get elected, and you and I have got to do schools. Right, Marty? <laughs> so I would like to buy brick number 18. In the Jewish religion, it means life. It is a very important number to my mother and my father. They chose it to get married on the 18th, and I am going to purchase that brick in honor of Avram and Carol Goldberg and the Boston Arts Academy. And I'm gonna be in tears in about a minute. So I wanna thank you for all being here, your passion, your focus, your understanding of what the arts do for kids, that this is such a key to learning. It is a pathway to success, and Boston is going to shine when this new school opens, but it's because of the kids inside the buildings and the teachers that are able to work with them. I am thrilled to be here and be able to give our part, the MSBA's part, to be able to fund a future, a future for our children, a future for the city of Boston. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow, my birthday is March 18th, and I know I was raised, I'm a, I'm a Mecco kid, and so I was raised by, um, co-raised co by Jewish host parents. I know the importance of number 18. Thank you so much, Treasurer Goldberg. And the mayor just whispered to me, Heather Minty, he would like brick number 33. So we'll have to figure out what the 33 uh, means. Oh, 33 Taft Street. So the mayor wants number 33. Let, allow me to do some quick uh, shout outs. Sue Pucker, thank you so much. Um, for being here and for your long-standing support of Boston Arts Academy. We are so delighted that you're here with us this afternoon. I also want to recognize Mr. Curtis Warner from Berkeley College of Music, who is one of our founders. Woo woo! We love, we, we love Berkeley. I saw Carmen Torres, our former uh, co-headmaster, uh, sneak in, and then the mayor mentioned my um, sister in this work, President. Uh, of the Boston City Council, Andrea Campbell. 
It's, I also want to talk about partnerships very quickly. We are so fortunate to have an excellent relationship with the Boston Red Sox. And I know I saw Dave Friedman earlier today. So thank you so much for being here. I know you could be in Houston. And I also want to recognize SCAPE. I think I saw Andrew earlier. We're building a relationship with SCAPE as well. So thank you for that. It's now my pleasure to introduce my boss, um, Dr. Uh, Lee Pelton, who is the president of Emerson College. He has served Boston Arts Academy for many years on our board. As I mentioned earlier, he's our most uh, recent uh, board chair of the Board of Trustees. Lee has led the ambitious redevelopment of the theater district downtown uh, Boston. There's nothing downtown around by uh, the common that you can't say doesn't have Emerson's uh, touch on it. But most importantly to us, he has been a, a real steward and a real leader. He loves our children. He loves the work that we do. And he is just an incredible leader. We are grateful for his expertise and commitment to Boston Arts Academy and the foundation. Dr. Pelton. Well, as we all know, Danella has no boss. So I'll just <laughs> set that straight. But I want to uh, thank uh, Anne, uh, her team, the Board of Trustees, uh, Danella, of course, the Board of Foundation, uh, the parents and friends, and all of you who made this possible. And of course, I especially want to thank you, Mayor, uh, because of your unwavering and extraordinary uh, commitment uh, to making this uh, project uh, come true. Uh, and then also to thank uh, Treasurer Goldberg for her remarks earlier. Um, this facility will be transformative. And while we are here to dedicate a building, we understand that we are here profoundly to dedicate the way in which this building will transform the lives of young people educated here for generations to come and provide extraordinary staff with what they need to fulfill the promise of educating gifted and talented young people. Young people who, through their creative talents, will make of this old world a new world. We recognize that it is a gift uh, to the staff and students who will occupy it, but it is also a gift to the city of Boston and beyond. What started two decades ago as a pilot school was, and is still today, a collaborative project between the Boston Public Schools and the Pro Arts College Consortium to provide access to arts education for underserved students in our city. The Boston Arts C Academy uh, reminds us very much of what was envisioned from the beginning. It's a vibrant haven for learning and artistic expression for more than 400 students in diverse neighborhoods throughout our great city. And these students share a passion for the arts and are provided with a critical pathway to higher education after their four years at BAA. And in fact, last year, almost 100%, save two students, uh, of the BAA graduates were accepted to colleges and universities. <laughs> this high success rate is achieved due to a variety of factors, which include the confidence students gain knowing that they are part of and empowered by a larger community that is committed to nurturing their way forward to a bright future. And BAA students come here to be the people that they were meant to be. A Boston Arts Academy cultivates what we call the four C's, creativity, collaboration, critical thinking, and communication. And these are the capacities that the world cannot get enough of, the capacities we need to solve the serious problems that our society is facing and to bring into being, as Shakespeare once said, the brave new world of the future. A BAA education prepares our students to be fit company not only for others, but for themselves as well. It teaches them to make no small plans because small plans do not create the magic that stir the souls and hearts of people. It will give them the confidence to succeed in college and beyond. And to them, we are reminded of the word music of Marianne Deborah Williamson, who said, it is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, to be gorgeous, to be talented, to be fabulous. And actually, who are you not to be? Because your playing small does not serve the world well. 
These are fabulously talented students whose promise for greatness will be immeasurably fortified by, new, by this new facility. In doing so, our future, their future, and the future of the city and this nation will be made much brighter as well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Lee. We have one more speaker, but before I introduce her, I want to really recognize someone. Can you just imagine how hard it is to move a school? We had lots of support from the city, and for that we're grateful, but there was a lot of coordination, a lot of organization trying to move a whole bunch of students and teachers who don't want to pack up their stuff. And, and she, she, like me, is somewhat of a, a newbie. She's a little uh, newer than I am to Boston Arts Academy, but if Carolyn Meadows is any way around, I certainly want to shout her out. She's our move czar, and, and she's, is she hiding? She probably, oh, there, there she is. Carolyn, thank you so, so much. She moved us to 11 Charles Street, and she's already working on plans to move us back here to 174 Ipswich Street. So, Carolyn, thank you for your leadership and organization. I don't need my book because our, our next um, speaker is a woman that I've come to know quite, quite well. She is a founding teacher. She's been here for the, this is her 21st academic year. It is her seventh year as our illustrious leader. Uh, and headmaster, and I could tell you this woman has a heart of gold. She could be anywhere, like Lee, you know, she graduated from Harvard, little school down, down the street, but she has labored and toiled and sacrificed. Um, Mr. Mayor, when we found out on December 13th that you and the city council that we got the building, Anne had purchased two cakes because she'd been down this road before. <laughs> so one cake said, better luck next time <laughs> and the other cake said congratulations and thanks to you we were able to wipe off the the um, better luck uh, next time but this is a woman that cares deeply um, about this school about all of you she really wanted to make sure I remember Linda there was a time through this process we went over she went over to Walnut Hill the only thing like us, a private high school down the street for the arts, 60000 a year to go there. And on the way back, Ann was in tears. And she was in tears because she said, our students deserve a campus like this. Our students deserve a school like this. So I, when I tell you, we walk around, we say we're the Clark sisters. I love this lady. I love laboring with her because she has a deep commitment and a fair sense of urgency that I have for our students. Before she comes, please, everyone, as we would do in church, allow me, please stand to your feet, because this just could not have happened without Ann Clark. And let's give her a resounding round of applause. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you, Danella. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. I want to give my heartfelt thanks to Treasurer Goldberg, President Pelton. On behalf of the Boston Arts community, I thank you for your support of our mission and for your investment in our students. We are incredibly grateful. Personally, it is very hard for me to put into words what I am feeling in this moment. I am thankful, I am honored, and I am thrilled. We are here today to finally, finally <laughs> put shovels in the ground for a state-of-the-art BAA facility. <laughs> finally. This building is certainly the realization of a dream for our alumni, for our families, for our supporters, but also for the city of Boston and for the future of the arts in Boston. The word that keeps coming to me as I stand in this moment is the word opportunity. Boston Arts Academy was founded most of all to create opportun opportunity. Over 20 years ago, a group of dedicated, passionate, and wonderfully stubborn people 
came together to insist that Boston, a world cultural capital, should have a world-class public arts high school so the youth of the city of Boston could have access to the arts. Today, we begin building, building a world-class facility to fulfill that world-class vision. And I am so happy that so many of those founders are here with us today to witness this moment. And many have been shouted out already, but I need to do it again. So founding headmaster Linda Nathan and co-headmaster Carmen Torres, thank you for being here today. Founding BAA board chair and president emeritus of Mar Mass Art, Kay Sloan, thank you for being here today. <laughs> Representing the founding institutions, the Pro Arts Colleges, I would like to thank David Nelson, president of the Massachusetts College of Art and Design and chair of the BAA school board. Lee Pelton again, president of Emerson College and chair of the BAA Foundation Board. Crystal Banfield and Curtis Warner are here representing Berkeley. Nancy Bauer representing the School of the Museum of Fine Arts. Kimberly Hack representing Boston Conservatory. We would not be here without the Pro Arts Consortium. Thank you, Pro Arts. I'd also like to thank again Scott Wilson from Wilson Butler, who has been dreaming with us for many, many years. Thank you for being here for Shovels in the Ground. Founding parent, Mary Regan, thank you for being here today. It was because of your advocacy that we opened the school. And of course, founding foundation chair, and as I like to say, patron saint of Boston Arts Academy, Sandy Gordon. Thank you for everything you've done here today. As I look out in the crowd, I see so many of our alums, our families, teachers, board members, long-term supporters, all of whom have shared that dream of opportunity for so many years. I'm so proud that you're here to witness this moment. My favorite thing about being at BAA for over 20 years is that now I can't go to a cultural event in Boston without seeing our alums performing, exhibiting, behind the scenes, organizing the event, funding the event, directing the event, or even just in the audience. When we founded BAA, we wanted to be a school to create opportunities for Boston's next generation of artists. And this new building will ensure that BAA will continue to be a place of opportunity, a place that supports the next generation of Boston's artists for years to come. And, this new building will ensure that Boston Arts Academy will continue to be a place of opportunity for Boston's next generation of creative change makers. Boston Arts Academy students are diverse, passionate, smart, and talented. Many go on to be artists, yes, but many use the artistic and interdisciplinary education they receive at BAA to become Boston's next leaders in other fields. We have graduates who are Boston's aeronautical engineers, Boston's nurses, Boston's teachers, Boston's product designers. No matter where they go, our graduates say that the confidence and training an arts-based education instilled in them is something they carry with them throughout their lives. Finally, this new building will enable us to create brand new opportunities. Opportunities we have always wanted to create, but until now have not had the facilities to support. This new building will increase the quantity and quality of rehearsal studios available for dance, theater, and music. This new building will have a state-of-the-art visual arts and fashion studios. This new building will have rich steam and technology resources. This new building will have amazing performance space, finally, a, re a recital hall that opens up to a rooftop terrace, a black box theater, and a 500-seat professional theater. This new building, in short, will allow us to expand opportunity. In addition to expanding our student population, this new building will allow us to expand our reach beyond our student population. We imagine increasing BAA's offerings for middle school and elementary school students. We imagine expanded summer programs, Saturday programs, school vacation work week programs, all free for BPS elementary and middle school students. This new building will allow us 
to establish BAA as a cultural institution that provides access and opportunity, particularly for diverse artists in the city of Austin. We imagine hosting artistic seasons that incorporate our students' performances and performances by outside artists. We imagine artists in residence working alongside our students. We imagine hosting residency theater and dance companies. We imagine developing a cultural use plan that privileges those artists whose work is currently underrepresented in the city of Boston, many of whom are Boston Arts Academy alumni. So, yeah. Space for the alumni, that's right. So, thanks again to the city of Boston, the Massachusetts School Building Authority, the Boston Public Schools, our pro arts partners, our alumni, our board, our families, our students, our funders and supporters, everybody. We're here today building new, a new building, yes, but what we're really building is opportunity, and you made that happen. Thank you for coming here today to affirm that the arts matter, Boston's youth matters, and that Boston Arts Academy will continue to make a difference and to create opportunity for years to come. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.